Cześć, witajcie na moim kanale, ja jestem Grabari, a dziś zapraszam Was na coś naprawdę wyjątkowego, bo wywiad z gwiazdorem Netflixowego show Ragnarok, czyli z Hermanem Tamerasem. Na pewno kojarzycie tego przystojniaka, jak nie z Ragnaroka, to z kultowego serialu Scam. No i właśnie spotkaliśmy się z okazji premiery drugiego sezonu Ragnaroka, żeby pogadać trochę o serialu, trochę o życiu, no i też zebrałem pytania na Instagramie od fanów Hermana, no i tam się zadziało, więc zapraszam do oglądania. First of all, congratulations on the second season of Ragnarok. I just started watching thank you. it and it looks really promising. Um, yes, thank you. How would you describe this season, of course, like spoiler free for people who yeah. haven't watched it yet? All right. So um, season two is, of course, uh, or starts right after season one. So for everyone that's seen season one and, and that knows, they, you know, knows how the characters work and who they are, uh, season two is the continued uh, development of those characters, seeing how they uh, experience all the transitions, all the changes that happens, and 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 you know get to know each other a, a, a lot better, finding themselves or, or figuring out stuff. So season two, I think season two is a, a lot more epic and a lot more more a lot darker than season one. So if you liked season one, I, I'm pretty sure you like season two. So describe the moment when you got the chance to read the script for the first time for this second season. Was it all you expected to be? Did you have like any idea where do you want your character to go? I, I had some hopes. I had some ways I wanted the show to go, um, but our writers always or tends to to go go places with the script that we're not like anticipating, uh, and that happened in season two as well. There were several you know moments when i read the read the script when i was sitting there going like well <laughs> okay how uh why but but still that's kind of like why it's fun to do this show because the act out you know us the actors or actresses we don't know where this is going story-wise so it's just as exciting for us you started shooting this new season like in the middle of global pandemic so i wonder like, yeah. was the filming process different this time around, given the whole, you know, restrictions, new rules and stuff? We expected the whole period to be extended a, while, a bit. That was what we thought would happen. Um, but because everyone was so professional with everything, we, we, you know, got tested and we stayed quarantined and we stayed away from people. We had locked up sets uh, where, uh, with zones so people could just be in certain zones. Um, everyone wore a mask. Uh, we had people running around with this, you know, um, uh, anti or uh, what's the name for it? The gel, right? The yeah, gel. Yeah, the gel right. you use to clean your hands. <laughs> I forgot the word. We had people running around with like two of those going like hey, to everyone. So everyone, it felt really safe and it felt really controlled. So we managed to shoot season two in the exact same uh, time period we shot season one, even though it was a pandemic. So that's brilliant. Did all those rules and, you know, masks and stuff, did it mm. affect your interactions with, the, you know, the cast, the crew? Was it like more fun or less fun because of that? I, I'm, I'm a really social guy, so I, I really enjoy talking to people, but I'm also a hugger. I'm, I'm, I very much like giving people hugs, um, which wasn't really possible <laughs> during season two. Uh, but what I realized in this pandemic and in general is that you can you can show much love with your eyes so even though people wore masks i started appreciating people's eyes a lot more so i mean <laughs> it works i I'm, i miss giving people hugs and and like laughing and like ah being close to each other and laughing and having fun but it works it works you just said that you like to socialize with with people yeah. so i wonder are you the type of an actor that before filming the scene you were like all by yourself, quiet, like getting into it, or you're just like going around, joking with people and simply having fun? It all depends. It all depends on the scene. Um, when there is a, a regular scene, I, I'm, I'm usually comfortable going around talking to people or, or you know, being social before the scene and, and then getting ready for it and then doing the scene. That's usually fine. But if I have an emotional scene where I need to cry or be very, very, very d d down, I usually take around five minutes before each scene. So it's not like the entire day is just, but it's like around five minutes before the shot starts. I need to just 
go back, put in my AirPods and just activate myself a bit. And then I'm going to do it. I think that really, it, that really differs from actor to actor though. Some people can do it like that. Some people need a lot more preparation. That's just how it is. Did you stay in touch with, with the cast, um, you know, be like in between of uh, first and second season? Yeah, we did. We didn't meet up that much, obviously, because of everything that happened. But uh, I'm speaking to them or, or communicating with them on social media all the time, all the time. And especially now, you know, close to launch and when, it, when we're doing PR for the show. Or, so we, we are staying in touch. We are a group of people. We are 10 or 11 people that, you know, do different stuff. Some do music, some do acting, some do theater. So a lot of people are busy. But still, we, we managed to keep in touch here and there, though. I think, like, the release date and all the PR, it's very exciting for you. But is it, like, s stressful? Because I'm following on Instagram and I, I've yeah. seen that, like, on the release day, you were really, like, pumped up and like, <laughs> looking for people's <laughs> feedback, posting the charts, position all around the world. Yeah. Is it, like, uh, equally fun and stressful? Yeah, I, I to be honest, Honest, this release, I wasn't really stressed. I wasn't. I was a lot more stressed when it was when you know season one came out because because for some reason or it's pretty obvious actually when season one came out, we did not know how people would react to it. It's a special kind of show. It's 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 a drama placed in Norway, a small town with with supernatural uh, things happening. It's a really weird type of show. So we didn't really know how people would react. So when season Season one came out, that was a lot more, oh, come on, oh, come on, people, love, please, please watch it. But after seeing the reaction to season one, I was kind of positive going like, yeah, you no, know, I'm pretty confident people are going to watch it. And they really did. Holy cow, dude. It's, it's been bananas for the last 72 hours. Yeah, it's crazy. I think the best part of this show is that like, it made people get interested in Norse mythology, which is awesome. And I, yeah. and I guess they wouldn't have the, the chance to, to do it anyway. Um, were you into it um, before you started filming the, the whole show? Or because I've seen some videos on YouTube and you seem like, like, like a pro in that subject. Like a pro? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think, it more, I think it, it's all about the fact that I'm a nerd. I think that's, that's where it all starts because every, I'm, or, I'm, I'm going to be careful saying that I would say most people in Norway know Norse mythology in some kind of sense, because we've grown up with it. You know, we've, we've heard about Thor with the hammer and, and, and Odin and every and Loki since we were kids. So everyone in Norway more or less knows the story. Um, but I've played a lot of video games that, that evolves around Norse mythology. So I'm, I'm a kind of like a bit more into it than some people. <laughs> But again, it's because I'm a nerd. It's um, more or less that. That's the reason. So that being said, that you are a nerd, uh, like, did it make it for you more, even more exciting to be a part of this kind of show? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Dude, every time, because one, some other things I think is really interesting in Ragnarok uh, is that we have small clues all, all, the, way, all the way through the show. We have small things or small giveaways or small, small Easter eggs that's been hidden in the show that 95% of the people that's watched the show doesn't really notice. But if you look at it really closely, you can see us foreshadowing what's going to happen in the upcoming season all the way through. And we're doing those kind of small things and we're putting in small notifications or like small words in the background. That's something about Norse mythology. And that's really exciting for me because in that case, I can sit down and find these drakes and really appreciate them. Yeah, and it's a great way for people to like watch maybe multiple times to yeah. just look for that. Yeah. That's um, what we're going for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we spoke a bit about the, the Instagram and the whole reaction uh, from the fans, but um, yeah, you, you have like a huge following. So how do you navigate through the social media when you know that like millions of people are watching you and do you like second guess like oh should i post that or not because like so many people are gonna see it yes i i have to make sure what i'm posting is is, is safe to post and that's when I, that, that's um i really early when when my social media or my instagram started you know um growing a bit 
uh, I just decided to separate myself, my personal life. I just, just decided to separate my personal life from my socials. And that was like when, when things started getting comfortable because I knew I didn't have to say what my opinions about something or, 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 you know, getting into everything. I could, I could just use my social media for feel good stuff and, and have fun with people and, and spread love and, and talk to people. And that's what I decided my social media would be. I want people to be happy with what I post. And I want it to be fun. So sometimes I have to run it through some of my friends just to say, is this, is this fun? Is this, <laughs> is this okay? And sometimes I get no, and in the case I don't post it. But usually I'm, I'm posting whatever I want. Going back to, to the show, um, it tackles like in a very specific way, but um, the subject of the climate change and everything yeah. is, you know, revolves around it. Um, do you think the younger generation is more serious about it comparing to like, let's say older people, which is not a very nice way to put it, but... Um, yeah, no, but I understand, I understand you, uh, the way you think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, what's, what's, what's good about our generation now is that everything is so accessible to us. That's, that's you know, good and bad. We, we are being exposed to the world much, much earlier than a lot of other people has been doing before us. Uh, but on the other hand, we now have the possibility to spread the word and, and, and stand up for everything and try to make, make a change, something that wasn't really that possible to do 20 years ago or 15 years ago. So, yeah, I think, I think young people are more involved in, in, in the climate changes or climate crisis now more than, you know, more than before. And I think it's really good. Also, one of the reasons why we're so you know, proud of, of, of talking about it and doing bringing that subject up in our show too because it's it's essential it's 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 what's going on it's what's real so i assume you're like pretty positive about the future um, if i'm positive about the future yeah giving the you know younger generation being more involved with with such issues i i at, at least i really hope so at least i really really hope so it it seems, it seems like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be positive about the future. I'm a positive guy. I have to be positive about the future. That's my job. Yes, I'm saying that. I, I trust our generation for this. So moving to the very positive um, subject, I, I guess yeah. you're aware of that. You have like a huge fan base in Poland. And so I went to my Instagram and I asked people like, do you have any questions uh, that I? Oh, awesome. you want me to ask? So I have... Uh, a short list but I some of them are really um, fun so of course like the first question is how did you like being in Poland how did I like being in Poland Poland is always fun Poland is always fun I you know one of the things that surprised me the most or I had a couple of things one it's really really warm in the summer really warm I wasn't expecting it to be like that it, it felt really 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 warm <laughs> and that was cool um, everything is cheap in Poland, that's really fun. Um, people are extremely easy to talk to. Uh, I, I visited a friend of mine that studies in Poland uh, and we had a lot of fun. So, and, and yeah, you think, you know what? I really like Poland. I would go back a lot more if I could, but it's gonna be in the future sometime. Okay, so like the second question is, I feel like it was the same person asking. So how is your Polish? Because we've seen you learning Polish words during Instagram lives and stuff like that. So I guess people know. Dude, I... <laughs> dude, I, dude I, I, I've tried to, um, d during my live streams, I've tried to learn around, you know, 12 languages. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's not going well I'm, I'm what i'm trying to do is whenever i'm traveling somewhere i'm trying to just you know do that language a bit before i go so i can say something uh but it's been it's been bad for the last couple of months i haven't really been focusing on that but i'm gonna get back on that horse sometime <laughs> <laughs> um how old are you were when you became interested in acting i was 13 or um, I started doing theater when I was six or seven. But the first TV show I did was when I was 13. And after that, I realized this is what I want to do, like movies or TV shows. So 13. How do you remember your acting experience in Scum series? Of course. Really fun. Um, the, the most surprising thing about that, that part of my career was that uh, when we started doing Scum, it was super small. 
And then halfway through the process, it just said Kablamo, and then everyone knew what Scum was. So it was like uh, the, the curve was like super, uh, super steep. Um, but it was a really cool experience that, you know, Scum is the reason why I have my social, social media the way I have now. So it, everything is fun with that. Only good memories. The next question, I, I think it's a platform where fans can post fanfics. Um, what do you think about Wattpad? I'm not sure if I... Wattpad. Okay, so in, what I've realized, because there, there's been a couple of months where I didn't really know what that was. Uh, and then there was this artist or a writer who, uh, who wrote a script or, or a fanfic about me, or not really about me, but about two characters. But... Uh, people you know had fun with it being me even though it wasn't and i thought it was super cool super cool really i know nothing against it at all but people thought i thought it was irritating which it wasn't i thought it was a huge pleasure and i i wanted to read it myself but i couldn't find the english version of it. so i think it's really cool so if someone's watching now that thinks i i you know think it's annoying i really don't i think it's awesome leave it up thank you <laughs> I think person that is asking this question, like, mm -hmm. did it actually? What's the weirdest gift you have ever received from your fans? Oh, uh, I re I've received a lot. I've received wedding 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 papers or you know pro wedding proposals where I just needed to sign and just send it back. I've I've <laughs> <laughs> I've received uh, some holy books. I've received an iPod Touch with a lot you know people are sending me a lot of weird stuff to me. <laughs> but it's uh it's always nice i've never received anything hateful it's always fun and love and games so good experience I've, I've seen on your twitter that you receive like a lot of sweets chocolates and stuff like that like polish i yeah, guess a lot a lot yeah, yeah. yeah sweets sweets and candy people are just trying to make me you know have diabetes that's diabetes that's that's why i'm receiving so much so much candy and so much cakes and so much you know sweet stuff and it's really fun but the only thing that people don't really understand all the time is that if it's not wrapped in its original wrapping i cannot eat it if people send me something and i think it's really fun when i receive cakes or cookies or whatever but when i do and it's in like a makeaway bag or a plastic bag i i can't eat it it has it has to be concealed otherwise i can't I, I need to be a bit careful, <laughs> yeah. but it's, uh, it's still, it's still fun. It's, it's the thought that counts and that's, uh, yeah. Okay. So the last question, I guess it's like pretty obvious. Will there be a third season of Ragnarok? I, I really hope it will, but I have honestly no idea, no idea yet, but I, I promise I'll let you know as soon as I do. Okay. Okay, so we are waiting for update. Um, thank you very much <laughs> for the interview. I really wish you the, all the success with, with the new series. Thank of you. Course, like, amazing new projects on your way this year or next. Thank you. Yeah, and we are... Thank I you so much. Safe to say we are waiting for you to, to come to Poland soon. As soon I as can't possible. wait. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to go back to Poland, man. I really can't. And thank you so much for having me, though. Really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bardzo dziękuję za obejrzenie tego materiału. Oczywiście, jak zwykle, odsyłam Was do produkcji, które promują moi rozmówcy, w tym wypadku oczywiście do drugiego sezonu Ragnaroka. Ja jestem w połowie, druga połowa przede mną, no i jeżeli będzie tak udana jak ta pierwsza, to jestem optymistą, już nie mogę się doczekać. A mam nadzieję, że Wy nie możecie się doczekać kolejnych materiałów na tym kanale, bo trochę tego będzie. Nie tylko podcast, ostatnio był duży fokus na podcast, ale będą też kolejne wywiady, w końcu jakby wziąłem się za robotę, więc bądźcie ze mną, zaglądajcie tutaj i do zobaczenia.